This is arguably the most outrageous gaming monitor on the market right now. It supports four external inputs that can be viewed at the same time, has a built-in KBM switch that lets you control all those devices with a single keyboard and mouse, and it has a 55-inch curved 4K 165Hz panel that I've been gaming on for the last week, and boy am I ready to let this thing ruin my life. But the question is, does that make the new Samsung Odyssey Arc a great display? It's a tough call, since this video is sponsored by Samsung making it impossible and unethical to provide an entirely impartial opinion. Nonetheless, I will delve into the monitor's capabilities and by the end of the video, determine the target audience for this absolute unit. When the first gen Odyssey Arc debuted last year, some said it was overkill and impractical, while others saw it as a jumping off point with loads of potential. And technically both sides are right, depending on who's sitting in front of the monitor. And as expected, Samsung has aligned with the latter mindset and given the second gen model some massive updates, like the new and improved Multiview. First gen owners, cover your ears, you're not gonna like this. The Odyssey Arc now supports up to four external inputs that can be displayed simultaneously versus just one external input on the 2022 model. Quite frankly, the multitasking potential here is a bit overwhelming for me. I can hardly blink with both eyes at the same time let alone handle four devices at once. But that didn't stop me from trying. Being a bit of a computer guy myself, I connected the Odyssey Arc to a gaming PC, a streaming PC to stream my gameplay to YouTube, a laptop for video streaming, and an Xbox, just in case my imaginary friend got bored. The end result was insane. I, I felt like I was mission control or something. It's just crazy being able to view and have quick access to literally everything from one screen. Without a doubt, this is the most efficient way to let people watch me suck at video games. Obviously, this is a pretty niche scenario, but when you're talking about four inputs, the workflow possibilities here are endless. There's not really a mainstream one-size-fits-all example of how to use this very powerful feature. Although one use case I thought of was for editing. Like, you could use Multiview to create a streamlined setup with dedicated PCs for video editing and rendering due to just how crippling video renders can be on a single system workflow. That would be a dream setup for some content creators. This example is also a reminder that it's not always optimal for every screen to be the same size. So it's pretty nice that you can easily adjust the screen sizes to really amplify and narrow down your focus. You can move and reposition the screens however you like, or enable picture in picture, picture by picture to suit your needs. It did take me a while to play around with and find the perfect multi-view layouts that worked best for me. So thank God the monitor's UI actually lets you save your layouts as presets. So you don't have to reconfigure them every single time, that would suck. Let's talk about the included One Connect box. It's basically a hub that reduces my anxiety levels. All external inputs, the PCs, the consoles, whatever you're connecting to this thing, they all connect directly to this box, which then routes to the monitor over a single cable. It's a proprietary Samsung cable. Yeah, yeah, it's not great, but it is well built. I will give it that. It's got a secure connection at least, and it does keep you clear of a cable management nightmare, whether the Odyssey Arc sits on your desk or wall, if you intend to use the included 200 by 200 base amounts. Lots of good I.O. on the box, including two HDMI 2.1 ports and a DisplayPort 1.4 port, all of which can output a PC signal at the display's full 4K resolution at 165 Hertz. More on what it's like to game on all 55 inches of this bad boy in just a bit. DisplayPort is a welcome addition over last year's model because it's just a powerful, high bandwidth, PC-friendly plug that's not typically found on TVs or such large format displays like this one. Other connections include one HDMI 2.0 port, four USB upstream ports, two of which are USB-C, optical and LAN ports, an X-Link port in case service technicians ever need to diagnose the device, and two USB downstream ports, which is where you can connect a keyboard and mouse to take advantage of the hub's built-in KDM switch. This is the second big upgrade with the new Odyssey Arc, which makes sense given the increased number of supported external inputs. And setting up the KVM switch was a little tedious at first because you have to go to Samsung's website to download an app called Easy Setting Box. And then you gotta install that to each computer that you wanna switch between. But afterwards, you'll be able to view and control all of them with a single monitor, keyboard, and mouse. This applies when you're switching between inputs in single view or bouncing from screen to screen in multi-view. To switch keyboard and mouse operation from one screen to another in multi-view, you just move the cursor against any of the active screen's edges for however many seconds you designate in the Easy Setting Box app, and then the monitor's OS cursor appears, and that allows you to double click and select the source you wanna to hop to. It definitely beats needing four sets of peripherals at your desk. That being said, there is a hint of lag when switching sources in multi-view that can feel a bit sluggish, particularly if you're needing to move between screens often. I'm not sure if this is something Samsung could improve with a firmware update, but that would help maximize the efficiency of this thing. 
The keyboard and mouse can also be used to navigate the monitor's UI, which is chock full of settings and apps like streaming services, a web browser, and all those apps can even be added to multi-view, just like any of the external inputs, which is pretty cool. Another way to control the Odyssey Arc is with the included solar-powered remote and Arc Dial. Between the two, you can do things like manage your multi-view inputs, execute voice commands to Bixby or Amazon Alexa, or use the Flex Move Screen feature that lets you do some pretty cool things, like change the screen size to a more modest 27 inches, you can move the screen position, and even adjust the aspect ratio. You can go ultra-wide 21 by 9, or even 32 by 9. I think Samsung realizes that you don't need all of this screen all the time, so they've kind of added a lot of options and flexibility to make the beast more palatable as a daily driver. If you're feeling extra bold, you can rotate the monitor 90 degrees to enter cockpit mode, which is a super unique way to experience the panel's sheer size and that 1000 R curve. It's a very aggressive curve. I feel like a flight sim with all the joystick fixins and stuff would be pretty sick here. Multi-view is supported in this orientation as well. It just stacks your inputs in a towering vertical fashion. Again, there's almost more options here than you really know what to do with. Let's talk about gaming on this monitor because it's for sure the most enjoyable thing you can do with it. In single view mode, when you've got all 8.3 million pixels spazzing out, it's actually insane. I mean, you're gaming at a desk with a monitor the size of a living room TV, and it's curved. It gives heavy VR vibes because it completely envelops your vision, but also, since everything is so large and up close, the enemies and characters in some games look life-size. And thankfully, the 4K keeps a sharp-looking image, even from a couple feet away. It's absolute sensory overload. This monitor, dude changes you. Like I found myself fully hooked to a game when I was supposed to be testing the product and working on this video, but that's what the Odyssey Arc is designed to do. It's like a narcissistic partner that demands all of your attention 24-7, makes themselves the center of your world, and alienates you from everyone you love until they're the only thing left you can rely on. But in a good way. I'm still not sure if I prefer to game this intensely all the time, but going back to a normal gaming monitor after using this one feels hilarious. Like, you can tell all my gaming monitors are scared of this thing. They're terrified, dude. Look at this thing. It's a freak. 165 hertz, one millisecond gray to gray, FreeSync Premium Pro. So obviously, fast gameplay is super smooth. No ghosting, no tearing. The backlight's using Samsung's Quantum Mini LEDs, which make a really good image. Great contrast and black levels. Stuff in the dark is easier to spot, and the colors are very nice. The local dimming is pretty solid. There's a bit of blooming on brighter objects, but I kind of had to sit back and look for it. It's, it's really not enough to be distracting, unless you're super sensitive to that sort of thing. It's got HDR10+, and being mini-LED, this thing does get super bright, I will say that. Like, if you open up Google full screen on this thing, you're gonna see God. Obviously, it can be turned down, but I would bet you could use this monitor in direct sunlight. Now, when it comes to gaming in multi-view, it is worth noting that when two external inputs are being used at the same time, they each output up to 1920 by 1080 at 120 hertz, which is still pretty nice. That does drop to 1080 at 60 hertz, though, once you've got three or four inputs, which is less nice, but still pretty okay. For what it's worth, the Sound Dome speakers are damn good for being built in. There's four corner speakers and two central woofers, which give you a 60 watt 2.2.2 channel that can hit pretty low frequencies for some surprisingly good sounding bass. Actually pretty good. I think most people who buy a high-end monitor like this are bringing their own audio to the party, but it is nice to have onboard speakers that don't sound like a pair of tin cans twerking. The only issue here is that since all this is happening from behind a huge display, it sounds a bit muffled from the front. I mean, I'll probably never not use my headphones when gaming anyway, but these are still probably the best built-in monitor speakers I've come across, for sure. Now, I can't end this video without addressing the elephant in the room, which is that the Odyssey Arc is basically an elephant in your room. Clearly, it's massive, so you do need a large enough desk to fit it comfortably, but it's also ridiculously heavy. With the stand, it weighs nearly 100 pounds. That's not an exaggeration. And roughly half of that weight is from the stand alone. I unboxed this thing and set it up by myself, which is not a good idea. I strongly advise against that. Like, it's actually dangerous to you and the product, so you're gonna need someone to help you out. Apart from its intimidating size and weight, the other main barrier to entry is pricing. To my knowledge, there's no other gaming monitor in this form factor that can do what this one does. It's a one-of-a-kind product that most of us recognize will come at a premium price, and I think its value really hinges on the extent to which you're utilizing its capabilities. Like, if you buy a high-end CPU to play Minesweeper, you're wasting your money. And you're probably not very smart. That's all to say, copying this monitor would be a waste if you weren't taking full advantage of its multitasking potential, or connecting a 4K-capable gaming machine and sending your brain into space. 
If you're gonna be doing either of those things, you might be ready for the beast. That's all for this one though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please share your thoughts on this monitor down below. Is this awesome? Is it insane? Curious to hear what you have to say about it. Also toss a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. As always, have a good one and I'll see you all in the next video.